I've seen questions raised online about how much power these new Model 3 and Model Ys can put out through their USB-C ports in the center console here and on the back of the center console for the rear passengers here. So what I'm going to do today is actually test that out. And to help me, I've got a couple different devices that are high power draw, and that's the laptop, this EcoFlow River battery bank, and a Noco Boost battery charger. I've got a number of ways to measure the power. One is this uh, battery bank actually has a meter on the front that'll show power in and out. I've also got this inline meter that I can use, and I'm going to uh, demonstrate how it works by actually plugging this cable into the phone, which is chart, which is taking this video right now. So by plugging in the phone, which uh, it's a iPhone 15 Pro Max, you can see that the uh, charge rate has gone up to 15 watts and now 25 watts, in fact, over 25 watts. So that's the inline meter, but there's also this cable that I've got plugged into it, which is confirming that rate uh, independently using this little display on the cable itself. So those are two different meters that I'll use, and I'll also use this EcoFlow River to uh, measure the power that's going into it. And with these different devices plugged in, I should be able to measure the total power available on any one of these ports, as well as the power that's available when they're fully utilized. So let's get started. If you've watched any of my other videos, you may recognize this Noco Boost X GBX55. It was uh, something I took apart and attempted to repair. So go check out that video if you're looking to see what's inside of these things and want to repair your own. But in any case, it's known to charge at up to 60 watts. In this case, it's the only device plugged into the USB ports. And both the inline meter as well as the meter on the end of the cable here should both show 35 watts of charging going into this Noco Boost X. Similarly, here's a MacBook Pro M1, and it's known to charge at up to 140 watts, but it's charging, in this case, pretty close to the rate that we saw on the NOCO Boost. That is 33.5 watts on this meter, 34 on this one, and this laptop is discharged significantly, so we know that it's not the limiting factor. But we have a second confirmation of about 34, 35 watts coming out of a single port. The next device to look at is this EcoFlow River USB battery bank. The inline meter is showing 24.3 watts. The uh, cable that's got the meter built into it is agreeing at 24 watts. And once you get all those displays and this one powered, you see 22 watts of power actually going into the battery bank. So for the most part, those match up. I went around and verified the findings that I had on the front USB port using the rear USB ports. And it's worth noting that using a rear USB port on this EcoFlow River, I get ever so slightly more power. So 25 watts here in this case, uh, 26 shown on the cable with the meter on it. And the device itself is telling me it's getting 23 watts. So about one watt more coming from the uh, rear port compared to the front ports inside the center console. But then on the Noco Boost, which had 35 watts on one of the front ports, when you plug it into the rear, it gets more like 26 watts. So there seems to be a power reduction in that case. And the same holds true for the MacBook. It's showing 26 watts when you're plugged into the rear port, whereas it was getting 34 watts of charge when it was plugged into the front port. So I think the conclusion is these rear ports put out a little bit lower power than the front ports. And I'm not surprised to see a difference because after all, Tesla does say the front USB-C ports are power and data, whereas the rear ones are power only. So next I'd like to test out two of the higher power draw devices, both plugged into the front USB-C ports at the same time. Now, as we saw before, we see 34, 35 watts going into one of those devices, but watch what happens when I plug in a second one. After a brief pause, the power shifts to 26 watts per device. So again, that was 34 to 35 watts when a single device is being plugged in to the front USB-C ports. But when both devices are plugged in, there's a pause and then a split, and we see 25 or 26 watts per for a total of about 50 watts. Now I have two devices plugged into the rear ports. One of them is the phone which is recording this video, and that's going through this inline meter here, and it's charging at 26 watts. The other device is the EcoFlow River, which is consuming 24 watts of input. So similar to the front, when we have two devices plugged in, we have about 50 watts total power. The difference from the front is that I can unplug one of these rear uh, power cables. And here, like the EcoFlow River has stopped charging, but we can see the phone, which is plugged into this inline meter, has not changed. So how do devices plugged into the rear ports affect those plugged into the front? 
Well, I have one of the higher power consumption devices plugged into the front, along with the devices plugged into the rear ports. And here we still see the same 34, 35 watts of power availability to one of those higher power consumption devices. And I'll plug in the other one for a total of all four devices plugged in at the same time. And as before, we see those front ports split from a single device at 34, 35 watts to two devices at right around 26 watts. And that did not affect the rate of charge for these devices in the rear. They're still at the rates they were before. To investigate what's going on with one versus two devices charging on the front ports, I've swapped out one of the cables with a built-in meter for this inline meter. So this meter shows the voltage which is being used, and USB-C power delivery operates at a few different set voltages, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15, 20, and on up. In this case, we see that the NOCO is plugged into the inline meter and it's getting 26 watts, critically at at the 9 volt level. It's a little bit lower, but that's the 9 volt level that's been negotiated. And the uh, laptop, which is also getting 26 watts, we can assume that that's getting 9 volt charging as well. So when I switch to a single device on the front USB-C ports by unplugging this cable, watch what happens. Power delivery negotiates up to the 12 volt level. The current stayed nearly the same, 2.93 amps, but the voltage shifted up to the next level. Let me do that in reverse. When I plug the laptop back in, the current stays the same, but it shifts down to the nine volt level. So we have 26 watts to each device. Unplug it, the voltage shifts up to the 12 volt level, and that one device gets about 34 watts. Meanwhile, the rear ports only support nine volt charging. Even with just a single device plugged in, we don't see power delivery shift up to the 12 volt charging level. I didn't think of it until now, but my meter actually has a mode which will test the various capabilities of a given USB-C port. Here I'm running the test and it shows that PD 3.0 is supported at 27 watts. So now I'll exit this test and show that the available power delivery levels, if I can get it to focus, are 9 volts at 3.0 amps and 5 volts at 3.0 amps. Those are the only two available. I can shift in to uh, actually use those, and this is a, called a trigger mode, and I can shift up to the nine volt level, but the 12 volt level is not available. And that's just because this port has not been configured to actually offer power delivery at the 12 volt level. If I run the same test using one of the front USB-C ports, you'll see that it comes up as power delivery 3.0, 36 watts up front. And if I can get into trigger mode here, we have the options of five volts at three amps, nine volts at three amps, and 12 volts at three amps. And that's for a single port. Now watch what happens when I plug in my laptop into the second port. I'll keep the camera on the screen as I plug in the cable. The 12 volt PDO or 12 volt charge level goes away. When I unplug it, 12 volts comes back. When I plug in again, 12 volts goes away. So that's what's going on. When you have two devices plugged in, the USB-C controller for this front set of ports disables the 12 volt PDO. When you only have a single device plugged in, that 12 volt PDO comes back and you're allowed to have 36 watts on one port or else about 26, 27 watts theoretically on two ports at the same time. The front ports are unrelated to the rear ports we know now. The rear ports can give you 26 per port. The front ports can give you 26 per port or 36 on a single port. So I hope that was helpful to those who care about the fastest charging they can get out of these ports and those who are just interested in how USB-C power delivery works in general. If you have any questions, post them in the comments area. And if you're inclined, hit that like button. But in any case, thanks for watching.